His playing career started six years before anyone in the current national team was born, and in spite of that, he is making a move to Europe for the third time. Right now, not like 20 years ago. He's Kazuyoshi Miura, King Kazu in Japan, a 56-year-old professional footballer who every time he takes the field, re-breaks the record for the oldest professional footballer. And this isn't some guy that's just managed to hang around forever either. He actually is the second all-time leading scorer for the Japanese national team with 50 55 goals in just 89 appearances. But that was another century. Literally, he retired from the national team in 2000 at the spry young age of 33. Which, if your brain just did a backflip there, he was 33 years old in 2000. I was four. In fact, he signed for his parent club right now, Yokohama FC in 2005 at the age of 38, and he's played for them for 18 years. But at least that club was in Japan. His first club certainly was not. According to this article in Express, Kazu knew that he wanted to be a professional footballer at the age of 15, and he moved to Brazil in 1982 because, well, Japan's professional league wouldn't start playing for another 11 years. This was, of course, 41 years years ago that he moved to Brazil and left school in Japan. He joined a youth team in Brazil called Juventus Sao Paulo, played there for four years before signing his first professional contract with Santos, actually, at the age of 19 in 1986. He would only make two appearances, though, before bouncing around a bunch of Brazilian clubs like Palmeiras and Coritiba, and then in 1989, he landed back at Santos, making 11 appearances and scoring three goals. By 1990, rumors of the professional league in Japan were swirling around, and Kazu, with his experience in Brazil, made one of the perfect faces of the new league. He moved back to Japan in 1990 to play semi-professionally there. He signed with the club that would eventually become Verdi Kawasaki, and he played in the Japan Soccer League for a couple of years, waiting for Verdi Kawasaki to become a thing in 1993. And while he was hanging around, playing in the Japan Soccer League, he got called up to Japan, like the national team, for the first time. His first major tournament with the team Team was the year before the J-League kicked off, the 1992 Asian Cup, which was being hosted by Japan. It was the perfect precursor tournament to finally having a fully professional league. And in the group stages, things weren't looking great. They drew the UAE and then had to score a late equalizer against North Korea to pull out a nether draw, going into the final match against an always solid Iranian team. Even a draw with Iran would be enough to send Iran in the UAE through to the next round of the Asian Cup. Japan had never even been to the knockout stages of an Asian Cup before, but that is when King Kazu introduced himself to all of Japan. A cheeky outside-the-foot pass cut right through the Iranian back line and found Kazu Miura with a perfectly timed run. He took it, blasted it right over the goalkeeper at a tight angle, and the entire packed house went crazy. Hiroshima Big Arch Stadium's going up! Thanks to King Kazu, like, a hundred years ago. In the semifinals, Japan came from behind again against their hated rivals, China, scoring in the 84th minute to win the match 3-2, which brought them to their first ever Asian Cup final with Kazu leading the line. Their opponent, none other than two-time reigning champions of the Asian Cup, Saudi Arabia. In an incredibly tight, tense affair, Japan won 1-0 in front of 60,000 fans in Hiroshima. And the MVP, the most valuable player of the whole tournament, Kazuyoshi Miura. He was the hero, and it was Japan's first major international title the year before the professional league kicked off in Japan. It couldn't have been timed any better. With his newfound superstar status, he kept the momentum rolling and led Verdi Kawasaki to consecutive J-League titles to start the league's history. He did so while scoring 20 and 16 goals over the first two seasons. His tremendous output for the national team and for Verdi Kawasaki earned him a loan move to Serie A. He became the first ever Japanese player Player in the Italian top flight and made 23 appearances for Genoa over the course of the season. He then returned to Verdi Kawasaki and dropped a tremendous 23 goals apiece over the next two years. By the time he left in 1998, he'd made 192 appearances and scored 117 goals for Verdi Kawasaki. But at the age of 32, it was time to begin the downturn of his career and the journeyman part of his career. He went to Dinamo Zagreb in Croatia for a year, didn't do that well, so he 
he came back to Japan. He joined a J-League outfit called Kyoto Purple Sanga, where he played for two years and in the second year scored 17 goals in 30 matches, so he still had it going on at the age of 34. Then in 2001, he signed with Vissel Kobe, his third J-League outfit, and made over 20 appearances in three of his five seasons there. And it's by now that it becomes clear that King Kazu is not just one of the all-time great players for Japan, he's a real J-League Iron Man. He's 38 years old by the time we get to 2005, and in his most recent season, he made 12 appearances and scored two goals, so surely his career is starting to wind down. Finally, right? No, not not at all, obviously, or else we th you get the point of the video. He's back in Europe right now. In 2005, he signed with Yokohama. That's where this team we met earlier comes back into the picture, and if you remember what I said earlier, he's about to spend 18 years with Yokohama as his parent club. He's 38 when he signs for them. And when he signs for them, they're in the second division of Japan. But in his second season, at the age of 39, he makes, fittingly, 39 appearances, scores six goals, and gets Yokohama promoted to the J-League. This brings him into the J-League with his fourth different team, where he makes 24 appearances in the season where Yokohama gets relegated. So surely, surely that's when you call it a career. Nope. Not at all. Not even close, actually, because in three of the next four seasons, he made 30 appearances in the second division of Japan playing with Yokohama. And he kept playing and 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 playing until 2019, when Yokohama got promoted again. Granted, he had much less influence on this promotion campaign. He only made three appearances in 2019, and that is the evidence of his eventual, eventual downturn from being an actual contributor. Obviously, you would expect as he gets to 50 years old that he would start to slow down, but it seems really after 2017 that he stopped being a significant contributor to the team. I talked to friends in Japan that basically backed it up that said, you know, he really just plays garbage time. His last goal for the team was in 2017, but he still was a part of the team that got promoted to the J-League and did appear in five J-League matches over the course of two seasons from 2020 to 2021. But north of the age of 50, he became more of a curiosity, which how dare he? How, how dare you not be a full-time starter in the J-League at 54 years old? It truly is insane how long he stayed relevant because he scored his last goal with Yokohama at the age of 50. But after two years in the J-League, Yokohama was relegated, and this prompted a move because, of course, Mira's career never ends. He loaned out to a fourth division team in Japan that's coached by his older brother. The team he went to is called the Suzuka Point Getters, and he made 18 appearances and scored two goals. There's plenty of wannabe 19-year-olds that wouldn't be able to make 18 appearances and score two goals, and this guy's 55 and he's doing that on loan there. Then something absolutely crazy happened. After the loan ended with Suzuka Point Getters, he went on loan to Alivarish. I think that's how you say it. It's a second division club in Portugal, which is obviously a huge step up as you're turning 56 years old. But it makes a lot more sense when you learn that Yokohama, his parent club, owns a majority stake in Oliva Wrench, making it a very easy move and one that did, in fairness, garner a ton of media attention and is probably the reason you've heard of this guy uh, if you have at all. Because, yeah, he's a 56-year-old that just did a loan move to Europe. Given the fact that he still hasn't made an appearance in Portugal, it would seem that the whole move was just a bit of a, I don't want to say a vacation for Miura, but definitely some sort of media tour that obviously worked. But it's still a testament to the guy as a player that he has just become this kind of media curiosity over the last five or six years. And before that, he was a player that in the second Japanese league could very conceivably contribute up to the age of 50. It's been a long journey from 1986 when he started his professional career the year before Lionel Messi was born to now, bagging goals in the Japanese fourth division and going on loan to the Portuguese second division to see what he can make of himself. It's an insanely long amount of time, 37 years of being a professional player. Why? He says, my feeling towards soccer and my aspirations that I want to have success in soccer haven't changed since I became a professional player in Brazil in 1986. The passion has not changed either. As long as that passion is still there, King Kazu is so revered for his greatness and his dedication that he will continue to have the opportunity to play professionally. I can tell you that. So long live King Kazu. I want him playing at 70. Let's make it happen. As always, all the sources for this video are in the description. And if you want to keep binge watching on this 
same topic, I did a video about how Japan went from a footballing backwater to one of the best national teams not in Europe or South America, which is essentially a development that King Kazu has mirrored with his own career. So check it out.